Well, Taylor, we don't just have one. We have the Shongile, who's looking very cool. And we actually have another male that's sitting in the tree above us over here. So there is a male with a diker kill. And I think this male, which looks like it might be a Mvula, just judging by the ears, has maybe stolen this kill from little Shongile. Isn't that cool? So we've got the two of them together. Shongile is looking very upset with life. And you can see it's quite an old diker. It's pretty much been eaten all the way through. And so it took us a while to find this. We've been off-roading all over the place. We could smell the scent of leopard. We had Nyala barking, squirrels alarm calling. And we were kind of driving around. And then Seb's like, just reverse. I think I spotted something. And he managed to spot this beautiful leopard up in the tree. So I'm not 100% sure if it's Mvula or Tingana. But it's one of the two of them up in the tree. I think it's Mvula, just judging by the sort of neck area and the ears and then like I say little Shongile that is sitting next to us on the ground here looking very forlorn and that does look very Mvula like doesn't it that face already I'm pretty sure it's him just judging from this distance but little Shongile is not very impressed at all and I'm sure this like I say was her kill that Mvula has stolen but isn't this cool to have the two of them and the fact that he's not in any way aggressive towards her is very interesting and I've watched Mvula with other cubs he's often very very chilled around um leopard cubs i've seen him with others that are not his and he seems to be quite fine even young males but with little shongile he's no growling there's no hissing he's sleeping shongile is sleeping so it's a very cool situation to see and i'm glad that she's encountered another male leopard other than tingana and that he's been okay with her for now of course it could be because there's food around that he's just distracted by that and couldn't really care too much about her but it's cool to see that both of them are just sitting here there's no growling there's no hissing Mvula looks as though he's very chilled and so she's at least encountered her first other male leopard as far as we know other than Ntingana but she's looking fantastic she's all curled up in a tight ball because I think she's having a nice little nap but there we go you look very healthy my girl now, the other good thing is that she's right near the lodge, which means she's been spending a lot of time here. The problem is with where we are at the moment, it is so thick and so dense. We're just very lucky that the leopard was sitting up in the tree because otherwise to find this would have been really quite tough. And so we're lucky that she's here. And I wonder how long she's actually been here for because we've seen no tracks of her crossing south. And the last time we had her was around Treehouse. And I wouldn't be surprised she's been around this area for the last few weeks and that's why we keep hearing monkeys alarm calling from the lodge, but we don't find anything because of how dense and thick this northern section is. But it's fantastic news to know that she is around and that she's healthy and she's fit and that she looks just fine. She looks very sleepy at this stage as well. So, our Lara Moore, you agreeing with us that she looks super sleepy? Well, she does, doesn't she? She's kind of curled up into this little ball and she's got her head down and she's kind of just taking it very easy. I'm sure she's pretty upset about the fact that she's lost this kill. I would hazard a guess that it can't be Mvula's because we know Mvula was on that dead hyena yesterday. And so I'm pretty sure that this is her kill that she made yesterday and now he's come in and been able to find it. I'm just going to move a little bit so that I can actually, we can see if it is him. It does look like him and I'm pretty sure it is. Hello, little Shongile. You're looking very good, my girl. Oh, it's always so cool when we get to see Shongile. She's one of my favorites. She's such a pretty little leopard. And, you know, we've been sort of missing her because we don't get to see her as much as we would have initially wanted to. And so it really is quite nice that she's back and around. Now, Seb, I'm just going to position ourselves a little bit differently so we can see both of them. If you can just give me two seconds. Look at little Shongile looking up at Mvula at the moment. So she's kind of just looking up at him as if to say, please, can I come and eat? Now, Sally Jane, you say this is your first sighting of Shongile. Well, there we go. Aren't you impressed at how pretty she is? I think she's very beautiful. So I'm glad that we were able to show you little Shongile for the first time, the little princess of Juma. She's been a little bit tough to find over the last few months. And so... It's always such a treat when we get to see her, and that means that we've seen Hosanna this week and little Shongile, and well, when you have a week that's like that, then it can't get any better. But back to sleep she goes, and you can see, look at how she camouflages. We almost didn't see her. In fact, I was kind of off-roading, trying, watching Mvula, and I looked down at the last second, and there she was, curled up at the base of the tree. But I'm going to turn around so that Seb can access both of these leopards fairly easily. So Seb, just hold on two seconds because we want to be able to show you both leopards as and when. Okay. 
So Kobe, who's 15 years old, Kobe, you wondering, could they be mating? Well, Kobe, I don't think so. Chongile is a little bit too small for mating. Um, generally, they'll come into their first Easter cycle around sort of two years old, and we know that she's nowhere near that just yet. She's still quite young. I think it's more a case that she had a carcass, and Mvula has sniffed that out and then come in. And last night, Taylor was, well, this morning, Taylor was telling me that last night she heard vocalizing for hyenas and leopard, and so probably what's in all likelihood has happened is Chongile was able to take her kill up a tree that caused excitement with hyenas because we're not far from the den and Mvula maybe was attracted by that and has come in and then stolen the kill. I highly, highly, highly doubt that they are mating. It would be something phenomenal if she was mating because she's still small and I doubt that she's coming into her first estrus yet. But she's so funny because she keeps just staring at the carcass as though, please, can I have some? Look at that. She's absolutely beautiful. Yes. Shame, girl. Did, she, did he rob you of your carcass? Well, don't worry. It's okay. And I'm just trying to see her stomach. It's difficult because she's kind of curled up. But it looks like she might have had a little bit of it, at least. So, Barbara, you're wondering when will Shungile start marking her territory. Well... That'll be a while still. Until she starts coming into an estrus and actually producing cubs, she's probably in all likelihood not going to be marking any territory at that stage. Until she actually has that drive to mate and to try and find an area to den, then she's not going to be having territorial sort of marking yet. What you'll find with her, though, is that she's going to be moving and shifting according to where the other females are. And this is an interesting part that Shongile has come a little bit further north and is hanging around this northern area. I wonder if she's not felt the pressure of Tundi and Shadow from the south and that's why she's shifted up into this section and is now going to hang around here. And that would be absolutely perfect for us. If we could get Shongile to be in this northern section and then Tundi and Shadow down on our southwestern and southeastern um, areas respectively, it would be absolutely perfect in terms of a situation with female leopards so hopefully she will start scent marking but i would imagine it would be around sort of two years old that she's going to start really marking for the first time although in saying that i did see tiani when she was around the same age as shongile already starting to scent mark so it is possible but you can see there's not very much left of that diker so for those of you who are a little bit squeamish now is probably the time to look away i know it's bits of red meat everywhere but unfortunately this is how it works you can see they've eaten sort of the midriff of it and all of the internal organs have been taken out and it's now just the back legs and head and that's not going to last very long in fact i'd imagine by the end of today that will be pretty much finished but look at him isn't that the quintessential leopard photo or picture leopard lounging on a big tree paws dangling down tail dangling down and he's so good to see this old boy he's still looking fantastic i would have thought that he would have been losing condition but he looks as good as any and he's gonna have to be careful because he's right in the heart of tingana's territory now so violet you say you love the hanging paw well Yes, every, I think all of us do because hanging paw generally from a long way away means leopard and well who doesn't get excited about seeing leopards and we have Seb to thank like I say he spotted it from quite a way away so in fact I actually had to kind of do a double take to make sure it was a leopard so it was a really really good spot from him. Thank you Seb. It's a pleasure Seb. So Chitty Chatty Meg, you're wondering why they're still together and you thought that they live alone. Well, they do live alone, so leopards are solitary creatures, but you will have situations where there is a food item like this, and like I say, Shongile probably was the one that caught this diker and caught this food, and then Mvula has been opportunistic and come in, and because he's bigger than her, he's able to take over the carcass. Now, Shongile is waiting that if Mvula eats a bit of the carcass, oh, there's his beautiful eyes, look. I love his eyes. He's got the most fantastic sort of look about him. Seb, I'm going to try... Oh, no, he's going to go back to sleep. I was going to go forward a bit so we could get that branch out the way, but we'll try to do that just now. But what happens is, is that she's waiting that he might drop a piece of meat that she can then get in and still get some food out of it. So that's why she's still hanging around and why he's here. Now, she's just stood up. Oh, there's a warthog coming in. That's what Mvula was looking at, and Shongile has spotted it now as well. You see the warthogs just over there? So they're not far away as well. And both Mvula and Shongile have spotted them. Now, Mvula is probably not too interested, but look at Shongile. She's watching very carefully. 
And these warthogs, I don't think, have seen her. Now, unfortunately for her, the warthogs are probably a little bit large. It's particularly that big female warthog that's walking straight towards her. For somebody like Mvula, this would be something that he could really take on and would go after. But the fact of the matter is he's got a kill, so he doesn't have to worry too much. If it was just the smaller piglets, then little Shongila would have a chance. But those bigger warthogs are going to be a problem for her. They're about the same size as she is in terms of just the sort of bulk that they have. So it would be quite interesting. And I wonder if they can't smell something, because the warthog are also being a little bit wary of what's going on but this is very cool you can see look how she's watching her ears have flattened down quite a bit she doesn't have her ears as perked up as what we saw earlier but I think she knows that she's not going to have any chance. It'll be interesting to see, though, because what sometimes happens is the warthogs come in, and if they smell this leopard, they're going to chase her, and she might then have to climb up into the tree to try to get away from the leopard, I mean, from the warthogs. It's going to be interesting to see, especially this big warthog coming here on my right-hand side. So this one over there, and you can see the distance between the two of them is not very far at all. Now that warthog is going to, in all likelihood, give... Shongile a big hu big problem. You see, she's uh, starting to move away now, and Shongile is lay back down. She's realised that that's not going to be food for her. She's back down on the ground, just taking it easy, watching the warthogs come past. But Mvula is definitely watching these warthogs, and he knows that well. While he's up there, he's got no chance of being able to get anywhere near them. And the fact of the matter is he does have food anyway, so it's not really too much of a stress. So we've got a situation where she's not interested because she's too small to be hunting such big warthogs. And he's not interested because he's got food as it is. But let's see if the warthogs do come any closer. For now, they seem like they're just kind of milling around. It seems like they're moving away. But I can see Mvula's watching now as well. I mean, if Shungila wasn't here, Mvula might have an opportunity if the warthogs did keep coming and they walked right under the tree, he could then potentially drop down from the tree itself. But with Shungila being down on the ground and between him and the warthog, I would doubt that they would be able to come sort of this close. They'd probably get spooked by Shungile before they even got anywhere near where Mvula is. But isn't this cool? From lions hunting in the Masai Mara to leopards hunting or being in proximity to warthogs in the Savi Sands, it's so fantastic to have the two of them together. It really is. And I think the warthogs know something's not quite right. They're not 100% sure. They've definitely not seen the leopards, but they don't quite know what's going on either. But they know that there's some sort of issue here. They're probably with the vehicle. You know, warthogs often see the vehicles and move away from us anyway. So, let's see, they are getting closer. So, are Lara Moore, are you saying the warthogs are tiptoeing past this area? Well, at this stage, I would imagine that they would have to. You wouldn't want to be a warthog in amongst two leopards now, would you? I think that would be stuff nightmares would be made out of. If you were a warthog and you were sleeping at night, that would be a dream you wouldn't want to have feels like you'd be kind of getting flack from both sides and if we had Tingana here I would imagine that these warthogs would have a lot more to worry about Mvula he's like I say he's an old man and he's kind of doing his thing he's got food and Shangila a bit small but if this was Tingana those warthogs would be in serious trouble but look how she's watching them and behind that tree she's curled up she's going to be very difficult to see and these warthogs are going to really struggle to be able to find or to see him or her. So it's going to be interesting when they get a little bit closer, if there's maybe an opportunistic sort of run at them. And we already know with little Hosanna that he's a lot more sort of active in his hunting than what Shungile is. But Shungile, maybe you never know, has already tried to hunt warthogs in, the, in her sort of life on her own and has realized that they're not an easy thing to hunt, and that's why she's not that interested. But Mvula is surprising me. I would have thought he would have been a lot more interested than what he is right well we're going to sit for a little bit longer and see if our warthogs do get a little bit closer and if they potentially get near Shongile or Hosanna but while we do that let's go back to Taylor who sounds like has got tracks for lots of big cats of her own